Welcome in to what has become the most popular day of the week around here on the Fun Astrology Podcast. It's Medical Moon in Your Sign Saturday with Stephanie. Stephanie, welcome back. Hi, Thomas. Thank you for having me back and so happy that everyone's enjoying and loving this segment. Oh, I think loving is uh, an understatement. So we're digging what you're doing. And I know you have prepared well because we're bumping a little close to home this weekend, aren't we? Yes, we are. So I am a Capricorn moon NATO. So I was really looking forward to doing this and I can shed some of my own um, personal experience with this placement. <laughs> Well, why don't you just rock and roll, and then maybe we'll talk about a couple of points around it in a minute. All right. So, yeah. So with this placement, these individuals tend to have a vital force that can be a bit cold, but it expends itself conservatively, which gives them excellent stamina and endurance. Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. So these are committed, disciplined, loyal, persistent, pragmatic, and structured people. Capricorn's a cardinal earth sign, so things need to be fresh and new, and elements of structure and sensuality need to be incorporated for them. And they do best with a structured healthcare routine. Areas of health focus for them are the skeletal system, including the bones, cartilage, teeth, and joints, specifically the knees, and the skin. They are very hardworking individuals, and they can really thrive with a discipline regimen, and they will work hard to accomplish all of their goals. To support bone and joint health in a budget-friendly way, which is also a very important consideration for them, uh, eating an anti-inflammatory diet full of antioxidants, spices like turmeric and cayenne, and lots of omega-3 fatty acid-containing foods can be really helpful, as well as doing some form of weight-bearing exercise daily. Vitamin K2 and D3, glucosamine, MSM, chondroitin, these are supplements that can be really supportive for bone and joint health. Uh, but of course, as usual, what I say is just please check with your healthcare provider before you start anything. And I want to mention these individuals, myself included, <laughs> they usually do not ask for help. They're quite self-reliant in nature, and they can often have restrained, tense emotions in order to maintain a sense of public composure. They can really push past obstacles that others get stuck on, but this often can result in physical issues if not kept in check. They're very prone to burnout. So things like sensitive stomach, uh, deficient digestive enzymes, touchy gallbladder, dry mucous membranes of the stomach lining can pop up if they're not keeping that in check and they're burning the candle at both ends. I know I myself have definitely um, had issues with burnout. So uh, that's something that I'm very mindful of now going forward. And also supporting digestion. So things like bitters, herbs, and relaxing before sitting down to a meal is really crucial. And then looking into digestive support herbs. So things like betaine HCL, milk thistle, Fennel, anise, and apple cider vinegar can assist digestion, and I myself use all of those at every meal. They also really help support liver function, those herbs I just mentioned, which can often be slow in this placement. Um, also, sensitive skin can be a big issue for cat moon natives and Capricorn in general. So supporting optimal skin health, staying out of the sun, you know, avoiding sunburns, drinking plenty of filtered water investigating whether common food allergens like dairy or wheat could be contributing to things like acne or dermatitis and avoiding highly fragrant face and body products and also using fragrance free laundry detergent are important. Getting yearly skin checkups at the dermatologist is also crucial because these individuals are prone to freckles, moles and sunburn. And just in general, the skin uh, for cat moon natives seems to be quite fair and, and it, it's sensitive. So just supporting that um, in general can can be something that's really important. I know I myself have had a lot of reactions to different types of things on my skin. So I also have to watch for like fabrics that I wear, which is kind of fascinating. So I tend to prefer cotton um, as opposed to things that are you know, um, more man-made like polyester. Another important thing to mention is that, 
even though this sign is known for their endurance and their credible amount of physical resources, they become depleted because they don't know how to replenish and recharge often. You know, usually it's an illness or something like cold or flu or an injury that will actually finally get them to stop and rest. So what I've learned, because I'm definitely guilty of this myself, is that building in a little bit of relaxation time every day is vital to prevent and be more proactive. So, you know, even if it's just like a half hour each night where you you take an Epsom salt bath, which can be great for the joints, or meditating to reduce anxiety, you know, that can be something that's really uplifting. And actually, I feel like it's just as important as eating healthy and getting enough sleep for cat natives because they just really don't know how to turn off and recharge sometimes. Um, So putting it in a schedule, um, which is something also Capricorns love, can really, really help ensure that they're getting that every day. Um, Another thing, too, is these individuals have high ideals for themselves. They set really high goals and they will go after it. But if they feel they're not measuring up, anxiety and depression can creep in. So important to really take a realistic look at the goals and investigate whether this is something that's really leading to personal fulfillment or it's satisfying someone else's aspirations. All work and no play doesn't do anyone any favors either. And since these individuals are so hardworking, they can often put play on the back burner. And uh, they can think that, you know, playtime is not productive and it's not going to lead to anything But something that I think is very important to keep in mind is that a life that has play and fun every day in itself is a really great accomplishment, and it brings a lot of rewards. So fun things for play for Cap can be like going for a hike, which is a a wonderful way to get in touch with the, you know, the goat, the totem for Capricorn, and the affinity for mountain climbing in the outdoors. And that also can help release pent-up stress and just get your mind off the everyday grind. Um, And flower essences that are really helpful for cat moon natives are vine to help relieve some of the stress associated with big responsibilities that Capricorn moon natives will take on. And mimulus, which inspires courage and confidence in the face of a lot of pressure. Stephanie, that was awesome, as always. Thank you so much. Uh, I've got a couple of questions for you. And the first one I wrote down was right there at the beginning. You mentioned, you might want to even go back in your notes and look at this. You mentioned sensuality. Mm -hmm. Now, (laughs) I'm not going to say what he said. You all have to buy the book if you want to. It would be in the Book of Earth. But Steve Forrest had a very interesting comment about sensuality and Capricorn. <laughs> it wasn't derogatory. or Well, it, it could be misconstrued. Let's just put it that way. And I'm not going to repeat it. But it was, let's say, calling into question <laughs> the sensuality element. Now, I know this is your sign, and I don't want to get too personal here, but where does sensuality fit in with the, as we otherwise think of, the kind of, you know, the practical, uh, focused, head down, a little bit furrowed brow kind of image that we would have of the mountain goat? (laughs) Yes. So this is a great point um, because I do think you are correct. Cap is probably the least sensual of the earth signs, but they are an earth sign and they do have that affinity for nature and that connection. And then also they rule over the skin. So I think touch is really important and considering how things feel on the body for them. um, I know me personally, like I mentioned earlier, I need to have certain things on my skin that feel good. I can't wear certain fabrics. I actually have an allergy to wool um, and my skin will get really red and scratchy. So I also don't feel comfortable if my body's constrained in certain fabrics or certain clothing items and I need to feel kind of free. So I like having the structure of clothing, but it can't be so much that I can't feel like I can move and I can breathe. And and then also, you know, moving the body and that connection with sensuality. I think just kind of every day, that's something that I keep in mind of my body movement and how I'm interacting with my environment. And I don't know if really fire signs or air signs think of that as much. So I think that's where the sensuality comes into play. But 
I, I do think you are correct. I think it's something that the that Capricorn needs to kind of almost be a bit more mindful on to tap into that side because uh, it is a really important component for them. Boy, a couple things on the fabrics. This is really cool. There is an you can do a study on this, and there's not a lot online that you can search, but there is a little bit. And it's around the energy of different fabrics. And you mm-hmm. mentioned cotton. Organic cotton is one of the higher ones. Linen. And actually wool is too. But, of course, I get the, uh, the – obviously sometimes that reacts. But you're talking about needing to wear some high-energy types of clothes. And I found <laughs> just a couple of weeks ago up at a little shop uh, an hour up the road here – some of the most amazing, like really spiritual shirts, T-shirts. And I am working with the people up there to see if we can figure out how to distribute them so that people can buy them off of the website. So I will let you guys know if I pull that off, but that is something that you would really want to take a look at because they are so comfortable and they look so good. They've got this spiritual connotation. Oh, just great stuff. I'm excited about it. That's amazing. And I definitely want one of those shirts because it is really hard to find, I think, organic cotton. And I want to support any company that's doing that kind of work. Uh, It really does make a difference, I think, personally, when I wear cotton. And I think man-made fabrics like polyester, I think nylon and rayon, those kind of things, they may be cheaper, but I find that they don't last as long and they're not as comfortable to wear. You know, the other key word that I pulled out was burnout and then the whole connection. And you mentioned that at the beginning and then you were talking about was I was hearing in my ears was kind of a push it forward, keep it going, that strong energy of just do it. Aries and Aries Mm. and Capricorn, of course, are cardinal signs. But then also we were talking about a little bit of this work focus, Virgo. So there's kind of an interesting blend between cardinal and the earth element. Mm, Yes. Excellent points. You're absolutely right. Yes. So the cardinal, that action oriented, go get it done, definitely in Capricorn natives. And then they are very service oriented, but I think unlike Virgo, these individuals, they, they do tend to take leadership. I mean, not that Virgos don't take leadership roles, but I think Capricorn has the ambition to ascend to the top. They want to be on top of that mountain. They want to be the leaders that delegate and, and get things done. Um, so they definitely have that boss energy in my mind. Um, I've actually had a couple Capricorn bosses. Um, and they're really good at systems and structure and getting things done and implemented in, in a very um, prioritized way. They just have that natural mind for it. They are excellent workers. My dad, as I mentioned, was a Capricorn son, and uh, he was promoted. He was a stockbroker, retail stockbroker, for years and years and years. Started back in the 1950s and was quickly promoted to assistant manager and then eventually manager of his branch and was so for 30-something years, I mean, just for a long, long time. One other thing it, that triggered was was holding in emotions. And I know you didn't address this particularly, but as you were talking about the burnout and the just keep your head down and push on, and it's almost like not connecting with your inner self, right? Not connecting with your feelings. Is that a danger here and bottling up emotions? Yes, definitely, definitely. And I myself have been very guilty of this and didn't even realize it. I didn't even have the awareness of this when I was younger. And uh, I think what it comes down to is this definitely is a sign that if I could assign any kind of like mantra to, it's the keep calm and carry on. Like you mentioned, they will push forward. They will go past difficult things because they feel like they can get it done. They can do it. They will take on whatever, even if it involves a bit of pain or exhaustion, they will go forward and get it done. And I will say they're very responsible, but on a sense, it's like you're not serving yourself because you aren't really checking inside often to see, okay, am I really doing this because I want to or do I feel like I have to? And I myself have had this happen where, you know, the burnout, burning candles at both ends, 
it's manifested in physical ailments. And I couldn't really figure out why I didn't, I didn't know why these things were showing up in my body that way until I, I did quite a bit of therapy and investigated and tied it back by having a journal where I would have a mood journal each day. And I check in to see where, you know, what moods am I having and then what physical symptoms are showing up. And I was able to tie it into a lot of this was high stress, high pressure work environments um, and just feeling like I needed to keep the composure. I didn't want others to see that I maybe was struggling a bit or didn't feel like I was getting the support that I needed. And also I think caps, not only moon natives, but Capricorn in general, they don't like to complain. They will hold it in and they will keep going. And so that that's another thing that can just kind of come out in a physical way because they don't, they don't want other people to worry. They want to be the ones getting it done. They don't want to make it seem like other tons of other people need to step in and help out. So by getting more connected to my moods, my, my physical symptoms, how stress affects me, you know, and letting the emotions come out has really helped me. And also, too, asking for help. That's not something that's been easy for me. And I think every Capricorn can relate to that, that there are times where we have personal limits and it's OK to ask someone else to step in. And I've recognized as well that being in a team is awesome because there's other skills that people have that I may not necessarily excel in. And I can ask them to support me and not see it as, well, I'm giving them a burden, you know, an extra thing to worry about by stepping in to help me. So those are those are really important key themes. Yeah, it's amazing how astrology just paints these pictures and then it just fits in like a glove like that. Okay, we mm -hmm. were talking about the correlation to Virgo, which is a perfect transition to what we are going to do here tomorrow. I've kind of built it up as a surprise, but we had a great listener question come in from the conversation that you and I had back when we were doing Virgo, doing the moon in Virgo. And we kind of scratched our heads and we thought, you know, Mercury is, how do we... You know, trying to fit it in. Well, somebody picked up on that with a great question, and you and I are going to tackle that together tomorrow as a little special episode. Yeah, I'm excited. Thank you so much for sending in that question to the listener. And uh, we've got some great uh, breakdown and key points and analysis as to there's some good supporting evidence for what she was saying. Well, it's going to be fun having that conversation, so I'm looking forward to seeing you back tomorrow. Let's get out of here for today. Stephanie, thank you so much. This was awesome, as always. Applause heard from all. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Thomas, and thank you so much to the listeners. I'm loving this, and we're getting close to the end, so I hope all of you are getting your medical astrology questions ready because we're going to start doing segments on those. Yes, send them to the speak pipe at the top of the website, funastrology.com, or send them via email if you would like, info at funastrology.com. I'm really looking forward to getting all of your questions and I can't wait to bring you more information and helpful things to support and empower your life. Have a great week. I'll see you guys next week.